So at 2530, and this was really kind of not, this is the first time I, I saw it, but it was not shocking, but it was surprising. Tony Ortega shows up. And I, w I participated in a documentary that happened a year or two earlier in the UK, right? And, you know, it was the only type, only type of documentary I wanted to be involved in, which, you know, pretty much was about m my story and, you know, w my thoughts and perspectives about Scientology, you know, being relatively objective about it, right? And the one thing that bothered me about it was that I didn't know they were going to do was they used this technique of interjecting, to and I didn't know until I saw the movie, but interjecting Tony Ortega into it. And the technique was they would press me on things like the IRS, for example, and try to get me to say that it was, you know, the exemption of Scientology was something untoward about Scientology. And I'm not going to say that, right? I'm going to say that, hey, we fought fire with fire and we won to get to the table, okay? And then, you know, we were treated like a normal citizen and we passed with flying colors, okay? But they want me to say, no, no, it was just you, you, you coerced it or you did it fraudulently, right? And I won't say it, right? So they get me saying some of the stuff about the, you know, the, the rough stuff that was going on when we were going head to head with the IRS in order to be able to get to the table, right? And then they bridge it with Tony Ortega just blithely saying, oh, yeah, they fraudulently got the exemption and, uh, you know, all the stuff that Marty's talking about is intimidated them into it. So he was uses the bridge to say all the things that they tried to get me to say that I wouldn't say and throughout the movie, okay? And so Alex Gibney, the great auteur, you know, is much like Mike Rinder in that I don't know if he's ever had an original thought in his life because he used the exact same technique. Tony Ortega's name does not appear in Lawrence Wright's book, and yet he's one of the most quoted people throughout the, the documentary. He's not in this book. Tony Ortega will just come in and he'll just... He'll just say whatever denigrating statement you need him to make in order to keep your your false narrative flowing, okay? I mean, that they had to go to him, who didn't even appear in the book. I told that, give me after the fact. I said, you know what? In the long run, you know, you're going to get all these accolades because everybody, it's very popular to jump on Scientology right now, but in the long run, that's the biggest mistake you ever made was bringing this guy into the movie. And he didn't deny it. He just said, well, I can't throw him under the bus. I said, I'm not asking you to throw him under the bus. I'm just telling you. I'm just informing you. I mean, this was after the fact. The movie was already done. And he was, and the context in which this came up was, is Gibney was wanting me to come to New York to the big international press day where they had this convention set up with every media under the sun, moon, and stars. And I said, well, okay, sure, initially. And then I find out, because, because Tony Ortega's, you know, all over it, that he and Mike Renner are going to be there. And I told Gibney, I said, I don't really want to get, I don't want to be like a, a um, an exhibit in a freak show. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if somebody wants to talk to me, I, I want to have mature conversations about Scientology, I will. If you have something like that, I'll do it, right? And so this was this whole thing about why wouldn't you want to be with Tony? So I was taking Gibney to school about Tony Ortega. I didn't want to be associated or involved with him because it was all a big uh, juvenile delinquent trolling game for him. And that Mike, you know, was steadily becoming um, one of his sort of acolytes, you know what I'm saying? And I just, I don't want to get in arguments, you know, and, and mess up your, your, you know, your movie premiere. Um, and I don't want to have that type of, that type of juvenile discussion, game playing. And of course, I was right. 